Hello everybody and welcome to another shader graph tutorial. In this one we are going to look at this glitch effect which is it doesn't matter where do you look at the but it, it matters that it is far from you so if you get closer to it then it's not there anymore if you look back and then oh my god it's still there so let's just start doing stuff. The first thing that we need is a PBR shader and it's worth noting that I'm using the uh, lightweight render pipeline 2019.3 it's probably not necessary that you use a recent version like this one but um, I just like to, to do so. So I already created this PBR shader and it has just three textures and the special thing about these is that I renamed the reference such that it matches the shader that was already <clears throat> that was already being used by these materials. And so if a material has a texture for the albedo and then you want to change the shader for that material to another shader, if the new one has the same reference as the old one, it's going to take the uh, it's gonna assign all the textures directly from the old shader to the new shade shader uh, which is really nice so the albedo is underscore base map and the I, I think the it's case sensitive the normal is underscore bump map and the metallic is underscore metallic gloss map so um, I just created these three added some um, default values to them and just um, um, sample texture each one of them the normal map type has to be normal obviously and this the, the metallic is default and you only need to use the red for the metallic and just connect the um, the albedo and the uh, normal so now to get the the distance you can use the uh, screen position node and just put it in a split node and then you will have this value um, and then you can use this value so let's let's uh, put it in a lerp node um, and then let's create a color and throw that in here and put it as red and connect this to a multiply of um, the, the albedo texture. So let's save that. And let's look at that. And you will see nothing. Unless if you... Oh well. Because we didn't change our shader yet. So our materials are in this uh, simple corridor. I downloaded this from the asset store. Uh, if you choose all the materials and then you click the drop down and you click shader graphs and you use the glitch shader you will see that everything is red so and that's because we should do raw for the screen position so let's save that Now everything is bluish except for the nearby, like the very close, you can see this redness. So this means two things. The first one being that this value has to be clamped to stay between 0 and 1 so that we don't... We, we can get either red or white or something in between. So that is gonna get rid of any blueness and now you can see this redness. However, we need to add some parameters to, to modify uh, where is the distance uh, gonna start and what's the range of it. So let's create distance, distance, I guess, and let's default it to, I don't know, two. Let's throw that in and it's going to be a subtract with 
with that and then so let's get these back a little bit um, and before even we subtract so for the distance where does it start we are gonna subtract and then for the range and let's put it point 0.5 ah, let's so sometimes in in this version of shader graph there is this issue where you sometimes add a property and then everything just freezes so you just save the asset and exit and go back again I'm gonna cut the the uh, every time this happens so yeah so we will drop our range and we will multiply this value by the range and then use it for the subtract and then use the output of that for the clamp let's play for with the default ones so that we get you can see now if you do this and you put three then it's thread and if you put five oh i'm sorry if you put like one it's gonna be white let's make it more sharp by increasing the range and then doing three and you will have this so let's save that and now every time you need to change anything you have to choose all these materials so let's put a range of 0.7 and you can see that it's like this and I mean you can um, we should probably switch these two so that the red is the far and white is what is close by and you can see that now so the distance um, modifies where does it start and the range modifies like the the fade between the red and the white how sharp it is so let's keep it like that now we have this value that will decide upon for the position now let's do the position stuff so let's create a position node which is going to be world and we are going to transform it to from world to object and connect that so this is not going to change anything obviously but then we will need to add something to this and this thing is going to be a vector this vector is going to be a um, a perpendicular vector to wherever the camera is looking at so we can get the camera direction from the camera node will have the direction and to get a perpendicular vector from that we are just going to do cross product with 0 1 0 and there is some math in some edge cases when you do this but in most cases it's fine so we can now add oops we can add this uh, vector based on that lerp so we will put this in a lerp in the a of it um, and connect this one here and we are going to add nothing and uh, so it's either this vector or nothing and let's connect this here and this here and let's save that and let's take a look now you can see this vector is being added which is to the left now we want time to to tell us if we want this to happen or not right and so we will need a um uh, noise a gradient noise uh, as well as a tiling and offset so that we can move 
this noise and you guessed it time which will be multiplied by the noise speed and let's set it to 0.5 throw it in uh, put it in the multiply put that in the offset so that our noise moves so we want the same value for all the places in the mesh and you can do that by just creating a vector 2 or 1 doesn't really make a difference and connect it to the UV and now you can see you have a one value for the whole thing so After that, we want to connect this to a step node so that we will have this value that will tell us if it is um, if it is white, which is it is distorted or it is black, then it is normal. And you can choose that by modifying this edge, right? And so this edge is going to be um, the frequency. So let's make it default to 0.6 and let's throw it in and let's connect that. And then this is going to tell us if we want this guy or nothing. So let's make this come here and so we can now multiply this by this. So it, if it is zero then the output is going to be zero, it's going to add nothing. If it is um, one then it, the value is whatever this vector is. And so it's going to be the distortion. So let's save that. Now, if we put the frequency to 0.7, for example, and the noise speed to 0.5, now you will start seeing this movement to the left. Pretty cool. Now, we also might want um, to control how much distortion and we can do that by multiplying a distortion and let's default it to R.5 throw it in connect that and connect that and the other thing is that we don't want it always to go to the left um, and I think this should be moving as well. Oh yeah, so what we will use here is not this, but rather this. This is the value that is telling us if it is going there or not. So, now you can see it here clearly. And I think we are going to have this the other way around. So this is here and this is zero. So now the back goes and the front stays right. So we don't want always to go to the left. Um, we want to rotate this vector based on something random. And so we can rotate this vector by a rotate about X node which is going to take this as the input and it's going to rotate the this um, this vector which is the, to the perpendicular to the direction about the direction itself and let's choose this to be uh, degrees and connect that so now you can see, for example, if you go for 90 degrees, then it's going, it's going to go down. If you go for 180, 
it's going to go to the other way and um, to 70 it's going to go to the top so this value is going to be determined based on something random so we will take the output of this guy and let's remap it we have to remap it because only the values bef above this frequency are going to be in the rest of this workflow and so the um, the input minimum and maximum so the maximum is always one however the minimum is as we said it's the frequency so we can duplicate it and connect that to the X and the Y is going to be one and let's connect that and the output of that we need it to be between one and between zero and one so let's then connect this to a derp which is going to go between uh, 360 degrees and zero and connect that in here well this will be in the T not in the A obviously now you can see this moving crazily in all the directions and you can save that and go back in here choose everything have a distortion of 0.2 let's say 0.2 is to less 0.5 looks nice and you can decrease the noise speed increase decrease the frequency as well and maybe only the far stuff and if you go close to it then stops so the only thing left is to just remove this red stuff and that's easy you just have to remove that and you're, you're set so that's gonna be it for this tutorial thank you for watching consider to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get the notification for any new videos and if you want to support me, you can support me by downloading my assets. The links are in the description. Um, and have a nice day.